the new invention that's going to start manifesting, which I've talked about before, you got to get it out of your hands. Like we got to make it more unconscious in your, your function, right? So glasses is the first layer, regular glasses, not these head apparatuses, regular glasses. And then the next layer is contacts. And then after that, of course, is the brain chips. But it's, you know, slowly there. But this is first because this is harder to, you forget about glasses. You always have to have this phone in your hand, your cognitive, you got to put it down. But these, you eat, you go to the bathroom. This is on your face all the time. There's this new company called Avagant. Avagant, I think it's called. And it's in collaboration with Qualcomm and Applied Materials to deliver an AI smart glass powered by the Snapdragon AR1 chip. And the Snapdragons are in all our elite phones. So now they're getting to the point of making these glasses with processing power as fast as these elite phones like your Samsung Ultra 24 or whatever. And so this is what it looks like. And see, I already knew eventually to get this kind of speed and processing, what they're going to do is make these sidebands just a little wider so they can put more chips in there. And so this is what it looks like. And it's fashionable. I would actually buy one. It actually looks fashionable. And so it looks like a regular glass. That doesn't look bad. There's no weird camera dots or anything, but I think there's a small one here. But eventually, you know, on phones nowadays, they have the ability to hide that front glass camera. So at some point, they're going to hide that camera. You're not even going to be able to see it. And these look nice. Those look like a really fashionable pair of glasses. And I think what their agenda was to show you, we can make legitimate looking glasses that anybody would wear. But then they show you what kind of technology is integrated in this. So... And this company, it's been around for a long time, over 10 years ago. So they've been developing these eyewares for a long time. But imagine seeing this Sora virtual reality in your glasses. Or if you are looking at something, it instantly starts telling you, hey, go this way, warning of this, don't do this. You know, it starts predicting for you your couple movements ahead. Oh, something's coming, walk left. And then you start trusting it because you saw what happened if you didn't walk left. You would have ran into a car or something. And the more trust you build into it, the more you're going to seem like, oh, I need this. This actually helps me. It's a mixed reality. So these are the constructs you need to think about as you're looking into the future. Because if children are so easily manipulated by the idea of their experience and, you know, you can go deep in this conspiracy. Maybe our vision have been getting worse on purpose because they've been trying to force people to wear glasses because they know the way you're going to have to manipulate the masses is by some vision apparatus. Well, there are a lot of conspiracy theories out there that the only reason you need to wear glasses is because you wear glasses. And the more you wear the glasses, the more your, your eyes get worse. So then uh, you have to get thicker glasses, which makes your eyes worse, which you have to get thicker. And it just keeps on going. Yeah, and think about if this goes so far that you can't live without glasses. Yeah. Well, a lot of people can't. Yeah, I know. But imagine if this was the bigger goal because you have to wear right. Yeah, that's glasses. what I'm saying. I never thought about it. Yeah, maybe that's the, been the plan from the get-go. I don't know, but from the get-go, but it would have been easy adoption. Like one of these AI people, maybe five, 10 years ago, started saying, this is an easy way to get it integrated. Just utilize the scam that already exists, which is eyeglasses, and amplify it to the point to where they have to just now integrate AI into these glasses. They're not going to know no difference. This is going to be perfect integration, and they will be dependent because they can't see without these glasses. I do believe eventually they will have smart contacts. I don't know how they're going to, maybe a superconductor. There's going to be some way to relieve, 
relieve all this heat, but that's even more permanent than glasses. And of course, if it's integrated with AI, they're going to tell you your eye, your contact is back there, take it out or something. They're not going to want you to forget about your contacts. Yeah, I don't know if the, I don't know anymore if they're going to go the contacts road because they're push they're propagating this for a reason to get people scared of contacts too. So, uh, it, I think they're just going to jump from the glasses to Neuralink. I was going to tell you another thing to look into is LASIK surgery. And what they do is they cut, if you look at this, this pupil, what they do is they cut it. And LASIK surgery might be one thing people do, and they could, if they had the technology, LASIK surgery. Yeah. Isn't that the same thing as uh, cataract surgery? No. See, what they actually do is they cut this really thin piece of that front of your eye, and then they burn all of this, and then they fold this back over, and then they press it down and let it heal. What they could do, instead of putting this flat back, they could just put a permanent chip there, a permanent smart lens. Because people do LASIK surgery all the time to fix their vision. So they could put a smart lens there, fix their vision, and a permanent chip smart lens. But what would be the point? It seems like a lot of work, a lot of money, when they could just connect you to Neuralink, and you're going to see it straight to your occipital lobe. It's more work and trust than your brain. It's just hard to convince people with stigmas. Like you have these ideas, these stigmas about putting a chip in your brain. I think the same thing, putting a chip in your eyes, the same thing. It's like, you're not cutting that out. Otherwise, unless you want to lose your eyesight. I, I think there is a difficulty in this too, but that's why I still think contact lenses and glasses are still going to be around because the stigma of having permanent, even though this is close, there's still the ability I can take it off. Contact lens, I can take them out. The idea of like, I can't without cutting my eye out or cutting my brain out, uh, you know, those chips, <laughs> that's a stigma that's hard to break psychologically. It's permanent. It's yeah, permanent. But it's a lot more, I think it'd be a lot more cost effective and easy if you just had it directly connected to your occipital lobe. You don't have to mess with all this exterior stuff anymore. And your brain will see it. You'll literally see it. I mean, they're actually giving sight to the blind these days to the same way. They just connect straight to the brain and bypass a blind person's yeah, eyes. I don't th I'm not denying the fact of what is more efficient or not. It's just the ideas of efficiency regardless. Mass adoption is what's going to allow people to do anything. And until you can convince the masses, you should put this chip in your brain. Anyways, I don't know. All I'm telling you is I just do believe that this is the layers. And so next thing is glasses, contacts, maybe LASIK surgery, maybe brain chips. It's eventually going to get there. Like I think eventually, of course, that's going to get there. But how you get rid of that stigma, I don't know. But that's Elon. Elon's going to do that, right? So I think 2024 is the year of displaying the visuals. This year, think about it. Have you ever heard of AI ever this much? Have you ever seen so many robots? In your life, have you ever seen so much advanced visual technology integrated with AI? 2024 is the year to show you exoskeletons, advancement of AI in your life. This is what we can do and what we are doing. It's, be it's becoming so real that now robot RoboCop is now Robert Man. <laughs> yeah, the Ro Robert, Robert Cop. Cop. Yeah. <laughs> so it's actually making the robot look like it's a human. Yeah. But I think in 2025 and 2026, you're going to start seeing the implementation of these things in companies. Like, it's all talk right now, right? But I think they're going to figure it out. And by next year and in the 2026, you're going to start actually seeing robots really start working in factories, taking real factory jobs. And then I think by 2027 to 2030, you're going to start seeing it in retail space. Like you may see them start at like uh, grocery stores or something else. So in 2027 to 2030. Behind the woodshed. By 2030, I think it's legitimately going to start replacing real workforce. By 2030, you will see no more workers at McDonald's. I remember back in the day, I think it was last year, people in our comments were laughing at us for saying that it's replacing people. Like, it's not, that's not another 80 years. And, it, and now it's like, and we would actually give them videos, but people still didn't want to see 